come now to the reading of our scripture, which is from the book of 1 Thessalonians, chapter 1, verse 1 through 10. And uh, I, I encourage you to follow along in your pew Bible, of course, the words on the screen. Uh, but let's pray. Lord, we ask you to uh, prepare hearts this day, to prepare us to receive your word, that it may, that it may be added to the very core of who we are. We may be changed to be more as you desire us to be. We thank you, Lord, for this reading which we get to do together, which we know that we are part of the body of, of your Son, Jesus Christ. And we rejoice for you use us for your glory. I also, Lord, ask for your mercy upon the sermon today. May it be used for your glory. May you use it as, as you desire. Lord, we pray this today in Jesus' name. Amen. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 1 to 10. Hear now God's word. Paul, Silas, and Timothy to the church of the Thessalonians in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace and peace to you. We always thank God for all of you and continually mention you in our prayers. We remember before our God and Father your work produced by faith, your labor prompted by love, and your endurance inspired by hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters loved by God, that he has chosen you, because our gospel came to you not simply with words, but also with power and with the Holy Spirit and deep conviction. You know how we lived among you for your sake. You became imitators of us and of the Lord, for you welcomed the message in the midst of severe suffering with the joy given by the Holy Spirit. And so you became a model to all the believers in Macedonia and Achaia. The Lord's message rang out from you not only in Macedonia and Achaia, your faith in God has become known everywhere. Therefore, we do not need to say anything about it, for they themselves report what kind of reception you gave us. They tell how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the coming wrath. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Imitators. Who is this? Will Farrell. That's right. Now, now, who is Will Farrell trying to be? Who's that? No. No, that's close, though. Alex Rebecca. Alex Rebeck in, in, in this particular moment, you can, he, he does look a lot like Ron Burgundy, although Ron's younger looking, he's got the darker hair, but uh, you can tell the glass block behind him and the, the stuff. Alex Rebeck. If you have not seen an SNL skit of Alex Rebeck of Jeopardy, take a few moments, go on YouTube, look up a clip, not right now, but you know, later. Absolutely hilarious. Imitators. We love imitators. There's just something a lot of fun seeing a, a persona come out of a person who's completely different from that persona. Um, Ali, uh, Will Farrell is a great uh, imitator, impersonator. He, he does all kinds, and uh, he does them so well. And there are many others who are great at imitating uh, other things. For example, I think some of the best Im imitators that I've experienced were our kids today. Uh, they, I, I seriously was going to go get a, a, a litter box from the back and bring it out here. They, they, they did the cat so well. Imitating, too, is something natural to humanity. We all imitate sometimes whether we like, like it or, or, or not. Um, how, many, how many of you, as you have uh, 
gotten to the point you are now, have heard your mother or father come out of your mouth. And, and it made your eyes roll, just like it did right now for Joanne here up front. Uh, I, there, there are times in my life where I'm just like, oh my goodness, my dad. Why? I never thought. We imitate because that's what we've paid attention to throughout our life. And it's natural as we focus on things and, and people influence us to imitate those things that have influenced us through, throughout our, our, our lives. However, there is, of course, a danger involved there. Because what comes out is oftentimes a product of what goes in. Jesus talked about this. It's not what goes in, or yeah, what goes in doesn't make you unclean, but it's what comes out that makes you un, un, unclean. And we all have that. Right now, the world that we live in, there's so many influences that, that are surrounding us every single day. Media exists wherever we are. We can't escape uh, influences. We can't escape the, those things that make us imitators. They're there always with our cell phones, our TVs, our games, with the, uh, the clothes that, that we wear being a, a reflection of those things we love with Pittsburgh Steelers here uh, and there and there and there. And, you know, I got Steelers behind me by chance. No, no Steelers. But Matt, do you, are you wearing a Steeler thing? Yeah, Matt's got one on too. We imitate that, that which we love. But not all the things we love are things that we should be proud of. When we're mean to each other, when we're volatile, when we are um, crass or rude, that comes from what we've put in. It comes from those things that we ingest through our eyes, through our hearts, through our day, 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 daily lives. And the thing is, is that this isn't new. Maybe, maybe the, um, the frequency at which we have things to imitate are, are there more so than they used to be. But Paul too talks about these, uh, the Thess Thessalonians whom Paul loves greatly. And if you ever want to read a happy letter, Thessalonians is one of them. Paul doesn't have really anything bad to say about them. He just wants to continue to encourage them to do what God has shown them to do, to do what they have imitated through what they have seen through Paul and what they have seen, seen through um, Christ, Christ, Christ him, him, himself. But some of us recognize our weaknesses. Some of us see very clearly the fact that we have not been imitating good things in, in our, 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 our lives. I can attest to that, um, and, and I've used this as an illustration time and time and time again, because it's the only good illustration I have, which is I don't have a bumper sticker that says pastor on the back of my car, because I am not a good imitator of good drivers. I'm an imitator of poor drivers, angry drivers at, at times. And um, I don't want people to know that I'm a pastor because I feel that at times I'm a poor, poor example of a pastor. And I don't want people to imitate me. But Paul says that it's not the people that we should imitate necessarily, but it's Christ himself. Paul does lift himself up and his friends. You became imitators of us because they lived throughout their life through Jesus Christ and only through Christ. But he also says that you become imitators of the Lord himself. 
And how is it that Paul knows that they are imitators of God? It's because of this. For you welcome the message in the midst of severe suffering with the joy given by the Holy Spirit. Paul knew that they imitated Christ because they looked different. You see, oftentimes, when we imitate the world and the things of this world, and we ingest constantly the things of this world, that's what we become, and people can't tell us apart from this world. We act how people think we should act. If someone cuts you off in traffic and you get angry, good. You have every right to be angry. If someone someone does something to you that belittles you, that, that puts you down, and you get your revenge, good. You have every right to do that. These are the things the world teaches us. These are the things the world shows us. If you've fallen down, I love this saying, uh, I mean, not because it's true, but because it's just such a huge influence in our world. You fall down, you pick yourself up by your bootstraps. I've never seen bootstraps. I'm not sure what that is. I assume there are straps on boots. But you pick yourself up, you dust yourself off, and you move on. The problem with that saying, however, is, and if you are influenced by saying like that, and you see someone fall, pick yourself up by your bootstraps. And we watch. But then I think about Christ in my life, and I praise God that every time I've fallen, Jesus has been there to lift me up. Or to give someone someone to me in my life to help me get lift, 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 lifted up. When we imitate Christ in our lives, we look different. Because Jesus is an influence by culture. Christ isn't defined by culture, but challenges the culture in which we we live on a constant daily basis. And I will say that through Jesus Christ in our lives, we as Christians do have a mandate be different, to imitate Christ. What does the word Christians mean? Christians are followers in Christ, but what is the literal meaning of the word Christians? I've told you this before, but that's okay. I barely remember anything. Little Christ's. Christians means literally little Christ. If you sincerely and honestly and, and, and uh, with great conviction call yourself Christian, then you are an, an imitator of Jesus Christ. You have labeled yourself a little Christ. Do we live that way? Well, Sometimes. And I pray that we have forgiveness and strength through Jesus Christ who lifts us up when we fall to help us to live as him again. I pray that as a church and as a people that we're able to be different. That when people see us, when people engage us, that sometimes in their lives we are the only gospel they get to read. And I pray that through Jesus Christ, that gospel is accurate and full of love and full of peace. And I thank God for each opportunity that we can be imitators and each opportunity that people see us. I pray they see Christ. I'll leave you today with this benediction. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of the glory with exceeding joy. To God, our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen and amen. Go in peace.